Major Slack videos. Well, yeah, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk this more Divinity Original Sin 2. And here we are in the Tower of Bracus Rex or Bracus's Rex's Tower. Uh, we can always find out exactly where you are by attempting to do a save. Bracus Rex Tower, that's where we are officially. And we have finished off a fate worse than death. Killed those three undead over here. And we have acquired the filthy key. Who's got the filthy key? Should be the last one. Here we go. The filthy iron key. With that, you can use to open this door here. If you didn't get that, watch the previous video and that will show you how to get that. So now we can open this door here and get into the rest of the tower. Now, one of my party members, Sabeel, has uh, thievery up to three. So we can pretty much unlock any door. Not any door, but most every door. So this um, going around the Bracus Rex tower is not too much of a problem. But let's just pretend like you don't have any party members um, with thievery up to three. And let's get one of the most important items in here, which is the final piece to the tyrant's gear. And that is way up here in this chest right here. Now, um, in order to get there, Sabio could just unlock this door here and we could just walk right through. If you don't have that, uh, like, like I said, a party member with thievery up to three, you're going to have to take a more dangerous route. There are traps here. There's another thing you can do. Let's go the easiest way. The easiest way is to shimmy along here. Hopefully you've got somebody with um, high wits and will detect the traps there, right? Once you see the traps, then hopefully you got somebody that has a ranged attack. Force attack these. Boom. That's that. Go along here and you're in up to this door here and interact with this switch the here air around the glowing relic thrums with power as the source barrier quietly crackles in the background and hopefully one of your party members has some source okay that green stuff right there have them interact with that switch and select the option call up your source powers and focus them on the relic the hum of the relic grows louder and bright light starts to spill from its runes Cracks start to spread across the surface, and it shatters like glass. And you're in. And you get 2950 XP for that exploration XP. Now, here we are. If you try to open this up, it's too heavy. your party member is probably going to complain that it's too heavy. You need 18 strength to open this up, a whopping 18 strength. Now, if you don't have 18 strength, um, hopefully you have one character which at least with with at least 12 strength. Okay, starting out with that, you can use some gear and some skills to get it up to 18 strength. Now, I've had you hang on to some certain pieces of gear along the way, and I've replaced it with other gear. But at the very least, you should have Meagle's breastplate, which gives you uh, plus one strength, and the Viper's tongue which is a one-handed sword which also gives you plus one strength. Meagle's Breastplate you can get in... Just checking my notes here. Go back to part 17 where we defeated Meagle. We took on and defeated Meagle and the loot that you get from him is Meagle's Breastplate. It gives you uh, plus one strength and you need 11 strength to put it on. All you have to do is just eat a meal and then put it on. You got a um, plus one to your strength. And then after that um, Actually, directly before that, in part 16, we acquired the Viper's Tongue, which is a one-handed sword that also gives you plus one strength. All right, now I've since replaced those with other pieces of equipment that do the same, knowing that I was going to be facing this. So my replacement for the Viper's Tongue is the Woodcutter Axe, as you can see, it gives you plus one strength. And my replacement for Migo's Breastplate is this here, the Ward's Armor. So let's give Losa, who's got the strength happening, she's got strength up to 12. Let's give her the ward's armor that brings strength up to 13. Let's equip, let her equip the woodcutter axe that'll bring strength up to 14. At this point, we can cast a piece of mind skill and something I don't have in my inventory. Uh, 
Oh yeah, we're gonna have to change her back to Losa. Any human in your skill should be able to cast this. Any human, rather, in your party should be able to cast this this skill right here. Encourage. All right, so peace of mind plus encourage will bring our strength up to 18. Let's do that right now. Peace of mind. Encourage. And now we have strength up to 18. There are other ways to increase your strength. And there we finally get the hands of the tyrant. Other ways of increasing your strength. Um, get away from the poison there, girls. You can eat a meal. That will bring up your strength by one. I think there's something that... Uh, let's see. Let's check out the consumables. I think mashed potatoes brings up your strength by two. Here we go. Mashed potatoes. That'll bump up your strength by two. I forget whether mashed potatoes will stack on top of a meal. Let's just try this right now. Our strength is currently at 14. Let me just do a quick save here because I don't want to waste my mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Oh. Up to 16. Doesn't stack. Oh, meals give you uh, plus two to strength as well. Okay, it doesn't stack. It's either one or the other. Anyways, that's one another way of bumping up your strength. Okay, give me back my mashed potatoes. And we're good. Oh my gosh, here we go. Here's the big money. What did we get this time? A helmet with one to summoning and the peace of mind skill. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic. It'd be perfect for Sabil. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Can't use this, but what is it anyways? The pulverizer plus two the strength. There you go. <laughs> yeah, t maybe you want to check this chest first. You might get some piece of gear that will help you out in the strength department. So we can't use that, but that looks pretty good. And knockdown arrow and a venom rune. Excellent. Oil flask and the armor frost scroll. What else? Uh, okay, let's just go quickly looting around here. And then I'll show you another way to get into this area. Lucky find. Did we loot that guy, we loot that guy. Did we loot this guy? Yeah, there is a ton of loot to be had in this Rackus Rex Tower. Make sure you bring like, you know, a bib or, you know, some kind of like towel because you're going to be drooling like a St. Bernard at a dog food factory after you finish here. Seriously. Um, <laughs> this, uh, I don't see the point of this, but this antique key over here, there's a key right here. The antique key. All it does is, as far as I could see, is open this door here. Which, I don't know, the, after you get it, you've, you're have you already in here, so I don't really see the point of that. Unless it's open, it opens another door that I'm not aware of. This will lead to the decrepit well, which we're going to do later. That's where we're going to get most of the loot. That's going to be insane. Uh, we can now not unlock this door with the antique key. And this will lead into another treasure room. 
if you go into this treasure room, the one thing to look out for is if you attempt to lock unlock this door here. Which let's just see if the antique key will open. I don't think it will. This will probably set off a trap though. Just attempting to open it. We'll set off this trap here. This thing is gonna start shooting out fireballs. I believe as soon as you attempt to unlock it. No, it's only after you successfully unlock it. Okay, so the antique key doesn't work there. Alright, so another way of um, getting into this area here. There's all kinds of traps down here and there's stuff to loot here you, and you want to figure out a way to turn off this fire. What you could do is just like, just take it. You know, have one of your characters just plow through the fire. Uh, here's another door that's typically locked. I wonder if the antique key will open this. Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't see. I don't see the point of that antique key. It just opens one one door that is easily bypassed. All right. So we want to get here. If you don't have the thievery skill, so the un unlock any lock, um, go here. Everybody should have the teleportation gloves. Or if you have like you know huntsman skills, you can just use tactical retreat. But like I'm just assuming that not everybody's on the same page. So you should, everybody should have the teleportation gloves, which will give you the teleportation skill. Um, teleport one of you guys down. Okay, make sure that you can actually see it. That's the thing about teleportation. Let go of that, Sibyl. Go there. and teleport one of you guys down here because that's the only way to drop down this ledge here there's no you know ladder or anything you can't just you know drop down yourself manually the game won't let you and then loot these two crates and then move them out of the way and go in here. Once you're in here, hit this switch here. I heard something. Something seemed to move into place. And that will turn off the fire in here and open all the doors in the Brachus Rex Tower. Everything will be unlocked. And now you'll be able to go everywhere. So that's another way to um, to loot the place if you don't have thievery skills on any of your party members. All right. So and while Losa is in there, she can like go looting. So let's check this out. What is your carry weight like, Losa? Sixty-six. That's good. Okay. Grab it. If it ain't nailed down, grab it. Oh, here we go. And this should be the big money chest. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. What have we got here? An unidentified wand. We can't use it because it doesn't apply to any of our characters. But it is a spine winder. Interesting. Plus one intelligence. Creates a one meter poison surface when targeting the terrain. And plus seven. Plus seven percent life steal. Very nice piece of equipment for a mage. And a smoke grenade. I loves me some smoke grenades. I'll look at all those books later. That could be a tedious process going through all those. Crafting Bible in here should give us uh about a dozen recipes. Let's just check that out now. 10 recipes. Here's 
sheets of paper. You can make some scrolls with that. More sheets of paper. That's good. And I think our work here is done. Don't really care if I missed anything. The whole point is come in here and loot. And you can take your time doing that. This is not about execution. It's just about showing you what to do. And the traps are turned off. Be careful though. There we go, finally. All we got out of all those is that we're gonna miss that guy. Get some lemonade. There we go. Sabil, where are you? All right, that's that. Another room to loot in here. This should be a teleportation scroll. Oh, hang on. A jar of mind maggots. <laughs> oh boy. These things are worth a pretty penny, if I recall correctly. Miscellaneous. I think you can actually make something to, with them too. Um, okay, let's sort by the last picked up here. Here we go. Yeah, I got two of these. I remember the syllables. This guy, you can fight with him if you open up the. Uh, there's a worm trimmer skill book. Let's grab the paintings. Yeah, for a little bit of amusement, let's. Uh, Okay, everybody into position here. Let's see you go over here. Seville, you crack that sucker, crack that sucker open. Pick lock. Sorry, just having some, some coffee here. And here we go. Fight. This is this is a cake lock. Two against one, and he's half dead. So. A little bit of a barrage. Three times. And... <laughs> Total overkill. Uh, what else? Okay, what are you gonna do? Takes a shot. Here he comes. Oh my gosh. It's a shuffle monster. Hey, comes over and whacks Losa, a good one. The nerve. The freaking nerve. You can take that standing up there, Losa. Peace of mind. Let's chickenify him. You range? There we go. That's enough out of you. Now you're a zombie chicken. <laughs> it looks a little drunk. <laughs> oh, you got your. Uh... Okay, let's give it a shot. No, it's not doing much damage. I'm gonna switch over to the bull. All right. Get right with your maker, zombie chicken. Because it is all over for you. And you have 
a tormented soul which we can use to make various uh, scrolls and whatnot. And that's that. Okay, I'm not gonna like, uh, you know, this, there's some other chump loot as I call it around here. I'm not gonna like painstakingly go through all that. I can do that off camera, it's no big deal. Um, the big money is over here in the decrepit well. That's what I want to get to before, um, yeah. And finally, like I said, um, if you open this, there's stuff to loot in there, but this will set off a trap as soon as you go in there. There you go, let's see. This thing will repeatedly shoot a fireball, so watch out. And you get some money, get this mutilated corpse. And we're good. Let's go, girls. Watch out for the fireballs. Finally, up here. Into this area here. Show you in the map where that is. In this area here. Okay. Came. Okay, there's a ladder to get into the place. Here's where we squared off the undead and got the filthy iron key the final piece of the tyrant's gear we found in here and here's where we're going right now this is where the big money is this is like oh my gosh hopefully you've got the shapeshifter mask if you don't go back and get it this thing here Fane's mask of the shapeshifter which you get from oh you can't go to the outdoor map here I don't think I've never tried to do this before. Um, I've never tried to do this before. Is there a way to go to the outdoor map when you're inside somewhere? What was the comment? Anyways, um, on the north side, let's just do it from memory, on the north side of the Hollow Marshes, when you you encounter Wendigo, that nutbar wizard that first wiped out the entire ship way back at the beginning of the game, and then you encounter again on the north shore of the Hollow Marshes. Once you kill her, I believe that's when you get Fane's shapeshifter mask, and that's very important for the decrepit well. This thing is going to give up a ton of loot if you got Fane's shapeshifter mask. What you need to do, first of all, um, let's interact with it, have a little chat. You approach a decrepit well and stare down into its toothless black mouth. No sooner has your head crossed the rim than weak voices begin to echo from the depths. Thirst, dry throats, drink water, water. Okay, now all you have to do is splash water on it somehow. You can do this a number of different ways. Um, if you have a rain arrow, that will work. If you have a water balloon, that will work. If you have the rain spell, that will work. Possibly even the raining blood spell. I'm not sure about that, but um, the other three I just mentioned will work. We do have water balloons. I've been making sure that we have a supply of water balloons just for this purpose here. So let's select a water balloon, splash it on there. There we go. The Interact well with it again. Filled to the brim with fresh, cool water, but what it has brought to the surface quickly evaporates any wish you may have had to quench your own thirst. You see the tangled remains of three corpses, a mixed mass of bones and skin from which three skulls protrude. They address you in unison, their voices a drone-like blend. We thank you for the water. We bless you for the water. We thank you for the end of torment. Well, it was our pleasure. True thirst is a horror. A horror, yes. To die of thirst forever. To find hell at the bottom of the well. Well, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Who was your true tormentor? The king. The king, okay. The king, Bracus Rex. Of course. The bane of everybody's existence. 
Bracus Rex. Alright, so why did he punish you so horribly? Wrath and terror. We displeased the king. The truth we spoke. His fortune told. No divinity would he be. And so he entangled our bodies and cursed our throats. Smote the brothers of Baladur. We thank you for the water. We bless you for the water. We ask you for a fair. Okay, what is this fair you are asking for? The fair, the toll, the levy. The people of Baladur must be buried with coin. Coin for the path keeper that leads the dead to the kingdom beyond. Yeah, that's nice. Spare us. Grant us call. The more you pay, the further the path keeper takes us. And you want to do this. This just just don't even think about it. You definitely want to do this, okay? So say you're ready to pay the fare. Sweet savior. Friend of death and fiend of life. How much will you give? Alright, now to take full advantage of this decrepit well. You need 1500 gold so that you could uh, pay the fare 10 times on this one here. Now this is the way it works. You can offer to pay $15 or 15 gold, 80 gold or 150 gold. If you pay 15 gold you get an uncommon item, typically a ring or a belt. And that's what you get for 15 gold. If you pay 80 gold you get a rare ring or belt, a blue. And if you pay 150 gold, you get an epic ring or belt. And that's the one I always go for, because it's really worth it. Um, so you can do it once with each character, and then you can put on Fane's Shapeshifter mask and change into other races and do it once for each one of those races. So essentially, you could do it five times for every party member you have. So I've got two members of my party, I can do it ten times. If you got more party members, you can do it like as many times as you have party members. You can do up to a whopping 20 times. Alright, so let's just go through this. It's always worth it because you get an insane amount of loot and I always go for the epic. It's worth 150 gold. So let's go for it. We thank you again. We bless you again. The wealth of the depths is yours. And... Laden with a burden of the coin. Sorry, I should have let that play. I'll let it play the next time and then I'll skip it all the other times. Sibyl got this right here. There you go. An epic belt. Two range, two initiative, and 24 HP. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Alright, let's do it with Losa now. Same thing. The well is now filled to the You see that we are the wrath and I'll just skip it. It's the same dialogue again. There we go. Once again, we're gonna go for the epic 150 gold. And we got Herodin's Clasp. To the long-awaited kingdom we will go. Laden with a burden of the coin you gave them, the brothers of Balador sink back to the bottom of the well. Whether they will find their kingdom or languish in the dark, wet depths forever, you cannot foretell. There you go. And Losa, what did you get? You got this. Herodin's Clasp. One Wits, 15 Air Resistance, and one Scoundrel. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Now, like I said, shape sh the Shapeshifter Mask... Are you wearing it? You're wearing it, Losa. Yeah, so let's have you, first of all, load up all these um, these skills here. Normally, I don't have them loaded because I only need Elf and turn back to original form. Let's load them all up. Elf, Lizard, Dwarf, and Human. Now, even if you're using a human, such as Losa, changing into a human still counts as someone different. That's the way it works. Okay, so don't think that you can't um, get another option to use the well just because you're changing into the same race that you already are. Alright, so, so let's start with Elf. And let's Go to the wishing well again. The, you see that we are the king, and so we have the fair, spare, sweet savior. 
Let's get let's go for the epic. And we got the bride's bane. Laden with a bird. The bride's bane. One constitution, fifteen fire resistance, and one necromancer. Sweet. Let's go for a lizard. The well is now oh boy. filled to the brim. You see that we are the rocks without the fat spat sweet savior. Steady strap the belt. The wealth of the dead. Laden with a burden of I've noticed that typically the rings are better than the belts again. It's time we go one constitution, one thievery, huh? And two leadership. That'd be nice for Sibyl, who's already got points in in thievery. Alright, um change into dwarf. The well is now filled to the brim. You see the tank. We are the rocks without the spare sweet savior. What's going to go for 150? The epic. This time we got the tug of war belt. Lots of belts. Laden with a bird. Two to two handed, one to retribution, one to lucky charm. Alright. Not seeing anything that's really jaw dropping so far, but whatever. It's luck of the draw. Let's turn it to human. It practice run. I cut some spectacular loot. It was nuts. The well is now filled to the br you see the tank we as usual. Okay, <laughs> come on, baby. Baby needs new shoes. Lucky seven. Let's go here. We get a ring. All right. Dragon's twine. I like the sound of that. What do we get this time? Two to huntsman and one to arrow thurge. Not too shabby. Oh yeah, we got that earlier. Um, all right, so Sabiel, it's your turn. Loads of changes back. Slap that shapeshifter on. Oh, she's running out of space. Um, Let's just put it up on this bar here because I'm not going to like uh, keep these skills on the hot bar. Drag them all down. Turn her into an elf. Like I said, even though she's already an elf, it still works. The well is now filled. You see that we are the rocks without the fat spare sweet. Okay, let's go here. Let's go. Let's get something really good. A ring. All right. The Knight's Promise. Laden with a bird. What do we get? What do we get? Two to Scoundrel. Sweet. One to Geomancer. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's try this again. The well is now filled to the. You see the tap. We thank you for the cross. We thank I have this theory that your main character will generally get better loot than your other party members. Let's see if it plays out here. Laden with a bird. Got the double knot belt. One to bartering, two, two to perseverance. This would be perfect for Losa. And seven percent to dodging. All right, not too shabby. Let's change into a dwarf. The well is now filled to you see the tank we have a heart the rocks we thank the fat spare us all sweet savior we thank you again what do we, we get another belt again. dang it the the strong string i think i've seen that before one to leadership 24 hp and four percent critical chance yeah whatever <laughs> okay one more shot here turn it to human The well is now filled to the brim. You see the tank. We thank you for heart, the cross, and so we thank you for the water. The fat spare, sweet savior. How about some nice necromancer bonuses? Come on, baby. What do I get? Dragon Claw. Laden with a bird. And summoning. Not too shabby. Fire resistance and poison resistance. Okay, not the best haul, but um, 
like I said, luck of the draw. And that's it. So that is how to make out like a bandit at the decrepit well. And that is it for this video. I'm going to go through all the loot. It's going to take me a while to sort this all out and figure out the best configuration for everybody. Um, and I will be back next video. And we're going to go right back into the war and take on probably the um, the never-ending Voidling fight. It's, it's not never-ending. There's 10 of them. It's a huge fight. It's pretty much a turkey shoot, though. Yeah, I'll show you that. Next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next video. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. Alright? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.